this is the All Powers S300 power station and the All Powers SP027 100 watt folding solar panel. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these two products, keep watching. All right, before I begin, I just want to thank All Powers for sending out the S300 power station and the SP027 folding solar panel so that I could share them with you. So now we'll just go down to the tabletop. I'm going to go over the key features for each of these units, but more importantly, I'm going to get them outside and show you how they work in combination. All right, we're going to take a closer look at the unit itself and I'll go through its specifications. But before I do, I just want to share there is the manual that it came with and the external charging unit. All right, let's get right into it. So physical specifications, weight. Weight for this unit is 7.6 pounds, 3.4 kilograms. So considerably heavier than the smaller S200 that I previously reviewed, but you're gonna get more capability with this, of course. So as far as dimensions go in this dimension, 8.1 inches, 206 millimeters, height, 6.5 inches, which is 165 millimeters, and thickness 4.3 inches or 110 millimeters. Now, as far as the performance specification, it has a 268 watt hour capacity, rated capacity. And I say rated because, of course, actual capacity that you get out of any power station is never what it is rated at. A good power station will have 85%. On average, they have 80%. So if if you want to know what your actual power that you have available to you or the actual capacity is kind of multiply your figure by 80% and that'll give you a good uh, working estimate. Okay, it is uses lithium ion batteries rated for 800 plus cycles before they start to drop their capacity to 80% of what they are when they're new. Now, as far as output, let's go through the different ports. So to start with, as you can see, it has two, let me tip it up there, two AC outputs for a combination of 300 watts using up to a 500 watt surge. So if you have a device like the ones with motors it, that need a little bit more power to get them going, that's the surge capacity of 500 watts, but the running capacity maximum 300 watts. And what's nice about this unit compared with the S200 is this is delivering pure sine wave, whereas the S200 was modified sine wave. Now, uh, what you'll be able to see as far as output ports on the side here, there are three, which I've found quite unusual, three USB type A output ports rated at five volts, uh, 2.4 amps output, which is pretty good. And one USB, a USB type C fast charge rated at 100 watts output, but it's also an input port and it will accept up to 60 watt input. Now you can also see there are two DCO ports, 55, 25 barrel bolts rated at 12 volts, five amps each. And on the far side over here is the auto port, cigarette lighter port, whatever you want to call it, which is a 12 volt, five amp um, cap capacity for it. Now, the last thing is, and I showed this once already, and this is the wireless capacity. Again, for a small unit, it's not common to see wireless charging on them. So this does have wireless charging as well, which will deliver up to five volts, one amp. All right, now, as far as charging this unit goes, so I did show the charging unit for the wall. This is a 60 watt AC wall charger. It has a 55 21 port on there and it will take oh let's see five to six hours for it to uh, fully charge the unit by itself now if you were to use the input port on the unit here the uh, usb type c input output port you can charge the unit within five to six hours now in order to do that of course you do need a fast charging unit uh in a in combination, you know, to charge it up. However, you can actually rapid charge your unit if you need to get it up to full capacity quickly. You could use the USB Type-C fast charge in combination with your AC unit, and you can get this to charge within two to three hours. Now, I don't recommend that as a regular practice. Reason being is when you rapid charge a battery, you shorten its lifespan. It doesn't like having all that energy put into it in um, short order. In the, you know, a few times uh, when you really need it, 
Yes, it's fair to do that, but on a regular basis, you're better off using either the uh, input port on this side or the AC unit in either case, so just charging a little bit slower. It will also accept solar power, of course, through the input port on the side at 80 watt max. So it has a solar input of 80 watt max, 18 uh, volt, 60 watt. And it has all the typical protection that you want, over voltage, short circuit, and temperature protections. All right, a couple more features I wanted to show you before going into the operation of the unit, and that is this right here. These are LED lights. Now, LED lights, some people like them, some people don't. I don't have much of a use for them, but they can come in handy, I guess, if you don't have a flashlight or a, a headlamp, so that if you're trying to set some, something up that you need to either charge or operate off of your power station, you have some lights that you can do that with. On the side of the unit, something I almost failed to show you, is the input port. So there's a 5521 barrel port input, and that would work in conjunction with the charger. But the other is an Anderson power power pole connection and this is what you'll use with your solar panel and you should know that the unit will only accept one of the two it won't accept the AC and a solar panel at the same time and of course I pointed that out which is the 12 volt auto port right there now let's go around to the front of the unit and talk about its operation so you can see there are three buttons along here the one on the far side another key feature something that is on some of the larger power stations from all powers and this is a Bluetooth button so you can actually download an app for your phone Android and iPhone to allow you to control this unit and I have demonstrated that on the larger all powers unit that I uh, reviewed some time ago but this is where you would turn the Bluetooth on, connect with your phone, and operate the device using that app. Next to it is the AC and the DC buttons. Now they are long press buttons so let me just start with this one. All right, so that one is on, and now the other one takes a longer press. You see how long it took to turn on the AC. I can only assume that that is to prevent accidentally turning on. So when the AC is turned on immediately, the cooling fan starts running and because the inverter is going to generate some heat. So my recommendation is, unless you're going to be using the AC ports, turn this off, and it's a long press to turn it off. Right, because you are using up uh, energy unnecessarily. So the display, trying to make sure it shows up, not as uh, easy to see as some, at least on camera, easy enough to see in, in light, real person though. What you have is the graphical display. First off is the icon with the power bars showing you incrementally the power of your battery status, but it does also give you the percentage and the hours remaining. So if you uh, you know plug a, something in to charge or operate off the device, it will sense how much power that uh, device's unit or that unit is using. And we'll show you how long the battery is going to operate. It also shows the output wattage in AC and in DC and also the input wattage. So everything is there. It's very simple, uh, it, but it's all there that you all the information that you're looking for. All right, as far as the SP027 folding solar panel goes, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave the demonstration for this till we get outside so I can show the two of them in combination because, of course, very simple operation. I'll be able to show you the connections and how it sets up and all its key features once we get outside. So let's do that now. All right, we're going to set up the S300 power station with the SP027 solar panel. But before we get started, just a couple of things I want to mention. It is late October here in Halifax. And first thing I want to say is don't think this is the normal weather. This is much warmer than it normally is this time of year for us. So I'm enjoying it while I can. The other thing, it's approaching noon. So I really, the sun is probably at its best right now for getting as much power as I can out of the solar panel this time of year. So let's set that up. I do have a small side table. I would normally not normally leave a power station like this exposed to the sun because they will heat up, but I just want to do this for demonstration purposes. Normally I would tuck it in behind the solar panel and I may do that yet as well because I may need the shadow, but let's get this set up. I think I'll move the table back a little bit. All right, so easy setup, unfold it. It has two fold-out legs on it. My comment here is that uh, the legs are good, they work, but there's no adjustment. So whatever angle this provides you, that's what you have. If you want to alter the angle, you're going to have to uh, come up with something other than this. So that's good for most of the year, but it's 
doesn't always present the best angle, especially for the time of year and time of day. It's probably okay for today though. So I have my connector, which is the MC4 connector on one end, Anderson power pole on the other end. That's, oh, there's my Anderson power pole. Sorry, wrong connector. So here it is, MC4 on one end, Anderson power pole on the other end. First, I'll connect it to the cable in the back, which is also MC4 connectors. All right, and I'll plug this into the side of the power station. All right, lit right up, excellent. All right, so I'll reposition the camera so I can show you just how much power is going into the power station. I'll make another comment now about the display on this. It's okay in shadowed area, but it's not so great in the sunshine. I'm hoping that's picking up. I'm seeing right at this very moment 69 watts going in just moved up to 70 71 72 i don't think i'm going to get much more than that this is as bright as it's going to get today and as as uh, good a timing yeah 69 so it's dropping back down again so around 70 we'll say average of 70 watts going in from this 100 watt solar panel all right let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few more closing thoughts first i'll talk about the all powers s 300 power station what i'd like about it and what may be a better if they made some changes to it so overall i think the thing i like the most about it is its form factor its compact size and its weight really hits the mark in terms of a small portable power station that you can take places much more conveniently than a lot of the larger ones that i've reviewed it's still got a lot of power for its size and it's got a few features that you'd often don't see on power stations this size including of course the wireless charging station and the bluetooth app those two things are they're extras they're not necessary but they're nice features to have included in a small reasonable sized budget power bank for sure uh, what are some of the things i don't like about it well really there's not much at all to say uh, negative about it it's maybe the fact that it has lithium ion instead of instead of lithium iron phosphate but by you choosing the lithium ion they are saving a little bit of money and therefore saving you a little bit of money and the other thing is 18 months warranty it i think it's maybe industry standard or a little bit below i think two years 24 months is probably the industry standard i have seen recently uh, warranties upwards of five years so this warranty should be a little bit longer if they want to stand behind their product and be competitive with the others is up their warranty a little bit now i haven't checked into this but quite often when you register your product online they bump your warranty up. Of course, you're going to be getting ads from them in the future, but I think that's a small price to pay for the extra warranty. I'll see if that's available, and if it is, of course, it'll be in the, the video description below. So let me put the power station aside and get the solar panel out. All right, a few closing thoughts for the SP027 solar panel, and uh, we'll start with what I like about it. It's lightweight, it's compact for a 100 watt solar panel. I think it's, it's actually right in line with a lot of the other ones. Um, there are, I didn't show this before, for, but there are also the paracoot para cord loops on the four corners. So if you're looking for an alternative way of setting this up, maybe on a ridge line or something like that, that would work as well. I like the fact that they have so many accessories inside of that large pouch on the inside, you know, including the ability to slow charge your car battery and all the adapters for the different connections. The fact that it uses the MC4 connections, and then you have a set of cables, one for the 5525 barrel bolt and one for or the uh, the uh Anderson power pole. That was the other one. Of course, that's the one I was using today on the small power bank, the S300 power bank. Yeah, those are the things I like the most about it. Now, what are there any downsides? Well, these are few, and I'm going to call them uh, minor criticisms. There, a lot of the power or solar panels out there uh, have the same thing. One was the legs, the stands that hold the solar panel up at an angle towards the sun. They're one angle only. So if you want to adjust your angle, uh, you're going to have to find an alternative of means of supporting it. And actually, that's actually quite easy to do. Um, one of the things I tried while I was outside is to use the lawn chair that I had out there. I put the lawn chair behind it without using the legs and I could tilt it back and forth and get a little bit better angle for uh, setting it up. How 
However, having said that, a lot of the other manufacturers of solar panels have legs with adjustable straps on the bottom so that you can set the angle um, according to whatever it is you want. So that would be nice if they improve that. It does save a few dollars, which they're passing on to you by not having those adjustments on it. Now, you need to know that this is a polycrystalline panel and not a monocrystalline panel. Uh, it, industry standards are that the monocrystalline is a little bit better in terms of long-term durability and energy transmission through to your power station, but also more expensive. So the polycrystalline is the more budget of the type of materials used for panels, but still very capable. As you saw, I got well, actually, I don't know if you, it actually did show up, but I got up to 85 watts at one point for that intermittent clouds, and I was actually quite impressed with that. To get 85 watts out of a 100 watt panel is, you're doing pretty good, actually, you know, unless you get peak sun on a peak day, great day, you usually don't get much above 85 watts. The other thing I like about this that I didn't mention, I don't think I've mentioned before, it's an IPX6 waterproof rating, which means you can leave this out in the rain without concern for um, the, the damage to it. Now, a couple of caveats there. One is the pocket on the side. It does have a waterproof zipper on it, but when you bring the cable out of that, of course, then you're opening up the pouch to rain. So that may uh, risk the water getting inside. And of course, the power station is not IPX6, so you'd have to have that hidden out of the rain under a bucket or somehow. So it's nice to know that if for whatever reason, with the power station hidden away from the rain, that if a sprinkle started to happen while you were not attending to the solar panel, that it's not going to damage it like some of the others. So that's that definitely a good feature for it. Price-wise, it's in the budget range, which I think is one of the nice things about it. It delivers the power when the sun is cooperating with you, of course. So, yeah, I think those are the things I like most about it and the things that could be small improvements to it. All right, we'll wrap this video up by saying I will put all the information I have for the S300 power station and the SP027 folding solar panel. It'll all be in the video description below if you're looking for more information there. And if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.